Hi, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining today. This webinar will be focused on talking about uh, how to sell in China via social media. And the main host of this uh, webinar will be Shalin, uh, who's uh, doing sales and business development at Vox Chat, who's very, very knowledgeable uh, about the Chinese markets and the different platforms. And she will be doing the bulk of the presentation. Uh, as uh, Shalin speaks, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of questions and you can use the Q&A section in order to write the questions. So everything which is questions, uh, I would recommend you use Q&A. And uh, we'll address all of these questions uh, at the end of the presentation. And uh, if you have any other things to share, for instance, I'm talking and you cannot understand my accent or something else in the, around this line, something logistical, or maybe you have a technical issue, you can't hear the voice or see the slides, uh, then you can use the chat uh, for anything which is uh, more to do with logistics. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I uh, want to introduce uh, Shalin, who is going to tell us everything about uh, China social commerce. Thank you, Thomas. And hi, everyone. Thanks for being here on time. Uh, now let's get started. So basically, if you are a brand looking to enter the Chinese market, or if you're just interested in the Chinese social commerce, this webinar will be uh, interesting for you because we will basically answer a few questions. First is among all these leading social media platforms in China, which one should you choose depending on your vertical and your price range, etc. And then the next question is how to choose your online sales channel. So here we'll cover WeChat mini program, Douyin, cross-border store, and Red Store, Tianmao, etc. Then having deciding both of that, uh, the next question is how to promote your brand and uh, your products. So here we'll talk about uh, collaborating with KOL, key opinion leaders in China, uh, doing some uh, live streaming, social ads, and engagement campaigns. And in the end, we'll also answer some common questions about cross-border shipping, logistic, and taxes. So let's get started. These are the major social media platforms in China. So WeChat is without doubt still the biggest one with 1.2 billion monthly active users. Although uh, people nowadays are consuming less content on WeChat due to the competition from short video apps such as Douyin, but it still stay very strong as a loyalty platform. Uh, for example, you can do that by creating loyalty groups or WeChat groups, or you can engage with your loyal followers on official account. And Douyin right now, it has 700 million monthly active users. It has already surpassed Weibo to become the second largest Chinese social media. Its core feature is short video and live streaming sales. So this is the platform when people want to consume content and uh, entertainment. Red and Bilibili compared to Douyin and WeChat is still niche in size, um, but they are quite strong in their own vertical. For example, Red is the best platform for product discovery and review. So you, you want to maintain a good reputation of your brand on Red. Moreover, uh, more than 90% of the active users on Red are female. So if your vertical is very focused on women, for example, uh, jewelry, cosmetics, handbags, etc., this is a platform that you definitely want to look into. Bilibili uh, nowadays have more than 200 monthly active users, is uh, the leading user-generated long video platform. So it's most similar to our YouTube here. Uh, Bilibili is particularly uh, popular among Gen Zs, also among people who are fond of pop culture or anime, comics, games, and novels. In the end, we also have Weibo, Although um, nowadays the user activeness on Weibo has been dropping over the years, uh, it's still an important platform for when it comes to major social events or when something big happens in the world, like, like nowadays. Uh, it is still good if you want to uh, work with a celebrity uh, or, or if you want to launch your uh, celebrity limited campaign. But if you are just posting uh, normal contents on Weibo, you won't be able to attract too many uh, genuine engagement. Okay, so nowadays, as people are consuming more and more contents on social media, short video and content sitting platform have become major online touch points. 
This can also be reflected in the platforms that brands invested more in 2021. So as we can see here, uh, more than 70% of the brands invested more on Douyin because uh, this is the platform with the highest potential and also with e-commerce uh, capacity. More than half invested more on Red because it's the one best one to collaborate with influencers and for product city. And of course, uh, you invest more on Taobao because this is the e-commerce side is the funnel closest to conversion. So of course, you want to invest more there. Okay. So speaking of uh, social commerce, there are mainly four types of social commerce in China. Although in this webinar, we'll focus more on the content social commerce. So meaning WeChat, Douyin, and Red, because this, this is where the big players are. And it's also for a foreign brand who wants to enter China, this is the platform that you want to uh, look into. So among all the Chinese social medias, how should you choose? So the key is really to use the right platform and the right strategy to engage with customers in each funnel. So for example, a Chinese customer will probably discover your brand through a celebrity or KOL post or, or an organic post, meaning on Red or on Douyin. And if they get really interested, they will go to Red to search for more information, comments, reviews, etc. This is where KOC gifting or small KOL gifting can play an important part because with this type of campaign, you can quickly boost the number of mentions about your brands on Red so that when people search for your brand, they will see, okay, this is a brand with 800 mentions or more than a few thousands already. So they will feel more confident to buy. So here we are talking about uh, upper or mid funnel, but if you want um, instant ROI or purchase, this is where a uh, paid KOL campaign will play a more important role. So in this case, we actually pay to the bigger KOLs who already have their uh, loyal fan base. So it's easier for them to recommend and sell products directly. And after that, of course, you want to uh, attract your loyal customers and to keep them engaged. This is where WeChat group management can play an important role. In the end, when people are really happy about your brand, they will publish their own reviews on Red. And then uh, these reviews or posts will in return enrich the results from the research phase. So, uh, so as you can see, there is a positive uh, circle right here. So if we break it down into platforms, Red is the best one for discovery and research. This is where your marketing funnel will start. However, people will not necessarily buy directly on Red because although Red has the option of a uh, Red store, it is still a new option and people are not used to purchasing there yet. So uh, nowadays, uh, in terms of habit, people will still go first on Taobao or Tianmao to search if your brand has a store there. And then if not, probably they'll go to WeChat to search if you have a WeChat mini program store. And Red Store is probably the last option that will, they will consider for now. So as we mentioned before, WeChat is the best one for loyalty program. You can get higher repurchase rate and cross-sell and upsell. Uh, so why is it good for loyalty? Because um, uh, WeChat, although nowadays is a mega multifunctional uh, app, it started as a chatting app. So when people open the app, they, they are used to chat privately or in groups with their friends, families, or people sharing uh, the same interest. And moreover, uh, if you are a brand, high chance you have a service account. And this type of service account, the communication is quite uh, intrusive in a way that every time you post uh, an article, the article will stay in your chat window, almost like if your friend uh, is sending you a message. So uh, as a result, only hardcore followers uh, of, your, uh, of your brand will follow you on WeChat. Otherwise, it will just be a bit bothering, which is similar to the newsletter. If you send too much, maybe people will uh, even unsubscribe to your newsletter. So um, this is why WeChat is a better platform for loyalty. For example, uh, we, we work with This Is Never That, a Korean streetwear brand. 
we help them to build two loyalty groups. So with only 1% of the brand followers, they contributed more than 5% of the total online sales. So meaning that uh, these loyal customers are five times more valuable than the normal ones. So we really want to get them engaged with, uh, with special events, activities, exclusive discounts, just to keep them happy and close. So just like WeChat, Douyin is another one that has built a closed in-app ecosystem from awareness to conversion. The user journey on Douyin quite, uh, can be quite uh, mixed because uh, users can discover your brands through either short video content, through an app, or, or even through a KOL live streaming. If your product happened to be cheap or, or discounted, meaning like uh, less than 15 USD, for example, many people will actually buy directly uh, in this live streaming. Because uh, although there are, brand, there are premium brands that are doing well on Douyin, uh, in general, the, the vibe of this platform is still uh, when people want to look for uh, cheaper options, for bargains, for discounts, they will go to Douyin or Douyin live streaming. Live streaming is also a core uh, feature of Douyin e-commerce because in 2020, uh, the GMV, which is a gross merchandising value of Douyin live streaming, already surpassed that of Taobao. Uh, although they didn't uh, review the data yet in, uh, for 2021, the goal was to uh, increase by 100%. So Douyin is quite ambitious and we will, uh, we will keep an eye on that. Okay, so next part is how do you choose your sales channel? As we mentioned before, KML is still the default option when Chinese people want to buy something from a brand. So there are mainly three options to enter KML, uh, KML Classic, KML Global, and KML Mini Store. Basically, the difference is uh, from the investment required from high to low. So KML Classic uh, means that you have to uh, localize your inventory. You have to uh, build your local warehouse in China. So this is more for bigger brands like Adidas, Nike, Gucci, et cetera. Both KML Global and KML Mini Store are cross-border options, meaning that you don't need to localize your inventory and you don't need a Chinese entity to open your store. So the difference is that uh, for KML Global, you will have your own flagship store. Meanwhile, on KML uh, Mini Store, you'll be listed uh, as a sub-store on a store <laughs> directly managed by KML. So it's more like a multi-branded store uh, managed by the KML team, and you will be able to list three to five products together with other products from brands such as uh, Longchamp, Fendi, etc. So the idea here is that uh, TML mini store is a new option. Uh, it's a cost effective option for the brands who wants to test their product fit in the Chinese market without having to invest so much uh, in TML Classic or TML Global. So uh, about the social commerce platforms, uh, we will mainly talk about WeChat, Douyin, and Red. So all of them will support cross-border sales. And WeChat, WeChat mini program is the only one that uh, you will own the data because the mini program is yours. Uh, for Douyin and Red, the platform will own the data because it's more like a marketplace option. Then it's easy uh, to have a mini program because any brand can just create their own. However, if you want to be listed on, on Douyin to own your Douyin cross-border store, you have to pass Douyin team's uh, criteria. And right now, is they are quite selective. So, for example, you have to pay a deposit of 15k to 48k, depending on the industry. And there's also commission to pay to the platform. So, red is kind of in between. Uh, the the deposit is lower than than Douyin, but as we mentioned before, a uh, red store uh, is still uh, too new. So we we will advise brands to wait and see. In terms of capacity to attract new customers, both Douyin and Red, they are pretty good in that because this is, the, this is where people are spending more time to consume content. 
in terms of the capacity to convert current customer, WeChat is the best one with its uh, with the WeChat group, WeChat official account. So in terms of uh, consumer habit, but nowadays people are used to buy on WeChat and Douyin. The difference is that WeChat can hold higher price range. So for example, for premium or even luxury brands, uh, they oftentimes have a WeChat, WeChat mini program. And for uh, Douyin, when people go there, uh, high chance they are still looking for uh, discounts or cheaper products. So uh, if we break it down into industry and price range, this is a summary of uh, how it will be like. So for most of our clients from jewelry, uh, fashion, handbag, footwear, cosmetics industry, both TMO and WeChat will be a good option. Although the difference is that TMO is a traditional uh, e-commerce platform. So they are, and there is a lot of organic traffic looking for sales, looking for purchase. And WeChat, uh, the core function is social. So you will, uh, you will need to invest in other marketing efforts such as uh, KOL or influencer to drive the traffic to your mini program store. And also note that if you work with TMO, uh, TMO team will help you with the logistic. If you open a WeChat mini program store, uh, the brand will have to handle the logistic, handle the possible return. So for verticals such as uh, footwear or fashion that, that traditionally has a higher return rate than food and beverage, for example, uh, this is one thing that maybe you should consider also. Okay. So uh, the next question will be, uh, after selecting the channel of uh, your social presence and your sales, how you should market your products and brands. We will start with KOL seeding and KOL campaign. So the workflow, uh, how to work with KOL is kind of, is quite similar to what we do in the West. So basically you identify your influencers that match with your brand identity and positioning. You will gift the products to these influencers and get some free exposure in return. Then we, we, will, uh, we will keep an eye on the performance. And if some influencers are doing very well, we will arrange some paid campaigns with them. Then after the campaign, we'll maintain a good relationship with the influencers so, so that uh, we will try to uh, get even more exposure after the campaign which is easier to be done if we have a good relationship. So here we will suggest a mix of seeding or gifting with paid campaign. Because as we mentioned before, seeding is more of a long-term branding effect. Unless you work with the celebrity who can really move a lot of sales, if you work with KOC or small KOL seeding, and the main function is to boost your social mentions and engagement on social media so that it will give people more face when they decide to buy your product. If you are looking for uh, instant ROI or short-term sales, it's definitely a paid campaign will work better. So this type of paid campaign can be either a shareable long video or a long text with images but you also don't want to do too much paid campaign just to burn your brand. So the best suggestion we can give here is to dynamically combine these two. So you cover the long-term need and your short-term results. So seeding is actually a smart way to engage with the KOL and start to gain traffic. For example, uh, we worked with Hunter Boots. It's a British boots uh, brand. We were gifting to around 40 KOLs per month. And in return, we, we got 20K USD of marketing value each month. Here, the marketing value means that if you want to work directly with these KOLs, this is the amount that you should pay. So as you can see here, it's a smart way to leverage the traffic from KOLs and also to keep creating long-term brand value because this post that KOL create will remain on social media. And if they get rival uh, like this one with more than 5K engagement, it will also play an important role in people's purchasing decision. So now talking about campaign, uh, so same as how you collaborate with influencers overseas, 
KOL campaign can be combined with exclusive discount, which will perform very well. So for example, in this case, we work with PD Paula, a Spanish jewelry brand. With only 8K USD of investment, we generated 35K USD of sales with a campaign ROI of 430. And also because of this campaign, we also achieved more sustainable growth in the first uh, four months of launch. It doesn't always have to be accomplished by a discount. If your brand has a non-discount policy, which is the case of this uh, French premium uh, handbag brand, you can offer some exclusive gifts instead. For example, some keychains, customizable designs, or some canvas bag, etc. So in this way, you maintain your brand positioning, but you also offer some highlights or benefits to your consumers. So in this case, we got a campaign ROI of 1,000%, uh, which is a really good one, uh, average order value of 1,000 USD. And also more importantly, we started to receive more organic orders after the campaign. So the, uh, so the idea here is that it's not only to boost your short-term sales, uh, but also uh, thanks to this KOL, your brand will be introduced to a broader audience who is interested in this style. We also work with other types of influencers uh, with video campaigns, but here due to the time limitation, we'll not uh, go through everything. But if you are interested, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Live streaming. So nowadays, live streaming has become a new way, uh, not only for shopping, but also for entertainment. For example, nowadays, the Chinese celebrities, like previous TV hosts or even talk show stars, they are doing live streamings for sales. And brands, uh, both international brands and Chinese brands, many are holding their own live streaming. So some are holding live streaming with a plot as if you are watching a uh, Asian Chinese TV series. And uh, in this case of Li, the CEO actually uh, joined the live streaming to, to engage directly with the, the customer. So it's not only for shopping, but also uh, to keep the audience entertained and happy. In the end, when people are happier, they are more likely to buy your product. So in terms of categories, so food and beverage, fashion, apparel, uh, smart home appliances are the top three best selling categories by SKU. Although traditionally we say people go to live streaming uh, to look for discounts and promotions, we do observe that uh, verticals with higher price range, such as smart home appliances and uh, mom, kids, and pets, the trend is increasing. So it's a trend that we will continue observing. Um, so <laughs> if you know Chinese uh, live streamer, of course, you know Li Jiaqi, which is the top one live streamer in China. This guy is famous for selling 15K SKU of lipsticks in only five minutes he can easily move sales of millions level. Although it's quite complicated to work with him because uh, his team has a quite a high standard to select the brands. Usually the brands have to offer the lowest discount of, uh, of the whole channel to be listed in his uh, live stream. So even like international brands such as ST Lauder, they also have to do the same to, uh, to, to be present there. However, live streaming doesn't need to be always uh, this kind of gi gigantic campaign. Instead of working with the top ones, we can also find some uh, mid-tier influencer on Taobao, which will give us a really good ROI. So for example, uh, in this case, we work with a Singaporean jewelry brand called Jumao. Uh, we paid a small amount to the influencer, plus 15% uh, of a commission on sales. And the result was quite good. We sold more than 1,000 SKU, uh, generated 35K USD of sales with a campaign ROI of almost 500. What's more important is that um, the conversion rate in live streaming is quite high, it's a 6%, so much higher than any traditional or static uh, website because the format of live streaming is really interactive and encouraging. 
So if the product is not too expensive, most people will buy directly in live stream. Okay, social advertising. Uh, now how to choose the correct advertising strategy to promote your brand. If we look at the online advertising market share over the years, we can see that the e-commerce ads, which is the uh, dark green one, and the short video ads, uh, which is the red one, has been leading the growth. And traditional social ads has been kind of uh, stagnant or even shrinking a bit due to the fierce competition from the short video. But the one that has been shrinking the most is search engine ads, for example, Baidu, which has been uh, like decreasing over the years for a very long time already. So um, the key is to really select the appropriate platform that match with your objective. So we collected some internal data from Q4 of last year, and this is the result. So if you are looking for impression or exposure, WeChat is actually a good option because the CPM is the lowest one. If you are looking for clicks or users that actually clicks your ad and enter to see the details, uh, red will be a, a better option because people on red are in the research phase. So they are really interested to know more. And Douyin or Ocean Engine, Ocean Engine is the, is the advertising platform, including Douyin and other apps from ByteDance. So, so it has a quite balanced CPM and CPC. Uh, but the highlight is that on Douyin, uh, you have very good CPE or, or engagement because this is the platform where people spend more than one hour, actually two hours per day. And uh, users are really looking for fun content, looking for entertainment. So they are easier to accept the ads because on Douyin, your ads also have to be a short video. So Weibo has the worst performance overall, uh, very high CPC, high CPE. And that's also because the user activeness on Weibo has been dropping. Also, Weibo has been commercialized for over a decade. So it has a lot of ads placements. So it's hard to attract the user's attention. In terms of re retargeting capacity, except red, all the others can do retargeting campaigns, which can bring really good ROI. We will explain that now. For example, WeChat is a good platform for retargeting, but not so much for prospecting. For example, with this client, uh, we separated their audience into three groups. So new audience, basically the audience using interest and behavior tags, and also users who enter the store, the store visitors and users who purchased. The result is that of course, the purchased audience have the best ROI of more than 12, um, but due to the data volume is quite low, uh, it, it generated less sales compared to the people who entered the store. And the store visitors also have a really good ROI of almost uh, seven. But as soon as we expand the audience size to new audience, the ROI quickly dropped to uh, 0 0.5. So the main idea here is that it's super hard to convert a new customer uh, just with ads on WeChat or, or, or other platforms, because high chance the user will go to research for your brand on other social media platforms, for example, red, and they will take their time to, to make their purchasing decision. And uh, if, uh, if they don't make their purchasing decision in time, and the sales will not be attributed as the sales uh, coming from this campaign. So resulting in a quite low ROI. Uh, there are better ways to attract new audience or do prospecting. For example, uh, working with influencers uh, in a more uh, organic way, let's say. So uh, here are a few examples with uh, This Is Never That. We helped this Korean fashion brand to launch on Douyin and the result was quite good. We got 38K engagement and with a CPE of only 0 0.13 USD. Uh, with Mansu Gabriel, we helped them to launch an ad and it ranked as the top three performance brand um, during that time. 
So this type of ad is more similar to our um, boosted content on, on Instagram. As you can see, it's still, uh, it looks quite organic. So people will not take it as a promotional ad. Uh, so the CPM is slightly higher than Douyin, but we got really good CPR of almost 5%, which is also beyond the industry level. With the Millier, we launched a retargeting campaign on WeChat with an ROI of uh, 394%. So as you can see here, um, although the general conversion rate is not uh, as high as uh, live streaming or, or, or others, but we also generated a uh, 4K USD of sales uh, with this investment. Okay, the last part about marketing is social engagement. So after attracting your audience, how to keep them engaged and move them to the next funnel? This is the question we are going to answer here. So uh, on red, community management is essential because it's one of the differences with Instagram. On Instagram, you follow your friend's account or celebrity big KOL's uh, account. Uh, but on red is rather about what the ordinary users are talking because it's for research. So people will uh, value the word, uh, the word of mouth of each user. So it's more than important than ever to engage with the customers who comments on your account and uh, or influencer post that mentions your brand. And also very important to answer the pre-sale or after-sale questions. Red can also bring a uh, real sales impact with operation and uh, engagement campaigns. For example, in this case with Bobby's, uh, when they enter the Chinese market, they almost had no brand awareness at all. So we really started from zero. But after three months of operation and campaign, uh, we, we got more than 6K red engagement without advertising investment. As you can see in this viral post, we got more than 15K uh, post engagement because the algorithm of red functions uh, similar to, to TikTok. If your, uh, if your newly published post gets a lot of engagement uh, like bookmark, comments, likes, shares, uh, et cetera, the system will define it as a high quality content and will push it to a, a broader traffic pool. So this is how we create this kind of viral post on red without advertising. Thanks to that, uh, we also increased uh, the sales on WeChat store by 70% and in the third month by 100%. Another way to uh, engage with your loyal customer is through WeChat group. So uh, like we uh, explained before, in this case, we created two WeChat groups for This Is Never That. It's, uh, it's not about how many people you have in this group, but rather about how uh, loyal or how engaged they are. So for example, uh, our team will create some uh, special events or uh, special discounts and then encourage them to repurchase or, or purchase some other styles from this brand. And the best part is um, because, um, because you have this group, you can easily share your WeChat official account articles or drive the traffic to your WeChat mini program for sales. Okay. So uh, this is the last part about logistic. So how to handle your cross-border shipping, uh, logistic and taxes towards China. Uh, these are the main uh, e-commerce for cross-border shipping. So mainly the difference is that if you work with TMO, the TMO team, uh, more specifically Cainiao, will handle your delivery. For example, if you work with TML Global, the recommended option is to uh, send it by consolidated package. If you work with uh, TML Mini Store, then it's compulsory to work with a consignment model, meaning that you do have to ship your product beforehand to a specific warehouse before the order happens. So that uh, when people, when the Chinese customer uh, place the order, TML team can uh, quickly fulfill the, the package to the customer. 
So this is TML. And if you work with uh, WeChat mini program, then the brand have to handle the delivery or shipping themselves. In this case, uh, for most of our client, we will recommend DHL for more premium brands. And if your product is uh, considerably cheap, then STO or Shentong can be an option as well. The, the last one about uh, Douyin cross-border store. In this case, you do have to work with official Douyin logistic partners. In this case, is uh, YTO. Okay, yeah, so uh, like we mentioned before, there are uh, several options that TMO offers, but for TMO mini store, it's uh, compulsory to ship it beforehand to a TMO bonded warehouse. If you work with TMO Global, uh, it's actually fine to ship the order after a Chinese consumer placed the order. And if you work with WeChat a mini program store, uh, DHL is a good option for cross-border logistics. For example, if your order value is less than 150 USD, the parcel will be cleared directly and uh, delivered to the final customer. If your value is more than 150 USD, then there will be a tariff and DHL will contact for more information. So for example, if it contains only one item, uh, we will proceed as personal item. So it's the recipient who will provide the info and declare. If it contains more than one items, note that if you include some uh, exclusive gifts in the, in the package, it also counts as items. So in this case, uh, we will need to proceed with a broker. So the broker need to submit the information and will probably charge for a declaration fee. So uh, it's, it's actually not that difficult to collect payment from Chinese consumers because you don't need a Chinese bank account with uh, cross-border e-commerce. You can just use Alipay or WeChat Pay and, uh, and these payment solutions will automatically uh, when they receive the Chinese yuan from the customer, they will automatically convert to your local currency based on the real time. So you don't need a, bank, a Chinese bank account or a Chinese entity in this case. So uh, actually uh, in Walk the Chat, we enable you to synchronize your e-commerce with Shopify or Magento. There are only two or three providers who can do that and we are one of them. So basically we have an in-house tech and uh, it will synchronize the data, uh, including product information, price, inventory, fulfillment information, and so on. We will translate all of that and synchronize that to your which I mean program. Okay, so I know it, it has been a lot of information and I see there's already a lot of questions in the Q&A session, just to wrap up very quickly and we'll enter the Q&A. So in summary, in terms of platform, RED is the best for brand discovery and review to strengthen your consideration. WeChat is the best for loyalty, Temo is the best for conversion or for purchase, and then Douyin is still the best one for low price. In terms of marketing, KOL campaign and live streamings can bring significant sales and positive ROI. Retargeting campaign can also work really well, although uh, prospecting ads is hard to get ROI. It's, it's better to work with KOL seeding or KOL campaign. In terms of logistic, you can sell to China through cross-border e-commerce without Chinese bank account, without Chinese entity. Okay, so thanks a lot for your attention. Now we will enter the Q&A session. Thomas, yeah. you want to... <laughs> So for the Q&A, what I suggest is uh, you can always also see the questions, right, Shalin? Mm. So I, I know from experience that it's difficult to read and answer questions at the same time because I used to do uh, webinars on my own. So what I suggest is we can I can pick a question and answer it. And while I answer the question, you can uh, maybe pick a question you like and then you will answer it after mine. And uh, if you want to complement, of, of course, after I answer a question, uh, you can also uh, do that. Sure. Cool, perfect. So, um, so I, I will start with a question from B. Didapa who asks, is a tax for logistics a fixed rate for all price range? And uh, so uh, this answer is a bit complicated, but um, basically you have two ways to ship to China. Uh, one is uh, you do postal, uh, 
postal uh, sending. So you send, send it as a normal parcel, uh, like, like if you are sending to a friend basically in China, uh, in which case uh, the taxes will vary based on different kind of products. Uh, but if you send it to cross-border e-commerce, and that will be the case, for instance, if you list on a Doin cross-border store on a Timon mini store, then you will have a fixed uh, tax, which will apply of 9.1%, which will apply for most product categories. The only exception would be is if you have very expensive cosmetics, then it will be taxed around 20%. But if you use this kind of proper way to ship to China, this cross-border e-commerce way to one of the marketplaces, uh, then it should be 9.1% for all products. Okay, uh, I see there are a few questions about JD and Kuaishou. So I will go back to the slide before. Da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah, so actually, as you can see here, uh, we did mention JD, but nowadays JD is still the best one for practical or functional products. Although, now, uh, although recently JD just announced their collaboration with uh, Shopify, uh, but uh, uh, the but Chinese consumers habit will take some time to change. So we'll keep keep an eye on that. And also Kuaishou, Kuaishou we will put them together with uh, Douyin because these are the two biggest Chinese uh, short video apps. So let's say Kuaishou uh, is stronger in mid to lower tier cities. It has a, a slightly different vibe than Douyin. Douyin can be considered as uh, chic or, or fashionable or trendy, while Kuaishou is more for, uh, for example, people in the third tier or fourth tier city uh, that they really, they have a, a closer interperson relationship. So uh, if your products is much cheaper, uh, then Kuaishou could be an option. Also, there's a question about the product range. So, for example, uh, Ang Douyin is best for products le for less than 200 RMB, so more or less like, like 30 uh, USD. Ang Kuaishou will be even lower than that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I, will, I will pick up a couple of questions from Alexandre et Chavid. Uh, so one is, uh, you were mentioning which admin programs offer cross-border solution. Does that mean brand can open a store while the stock is sitting outside of China? Uh, yes, completely. So for most cross-border solutions, you will always be able to have those inventory outside China, but in different ways. So if it's uh, WeChat, uh, because it's not a marketplace, it's, uh, it's more of a marketing platform, uh, you have complete flexibility on how you do the shipping. So you can put your inventory in a abandoned warehouse in China, you can put it in another location in Asia, or you can even keep it in your main warehouse and ship after you get the order. Uh, if you on Timor Global, it's kind of the same. You can actually uh, choose to have it in a bonded warehouse or you can sh ship directly after you receive the order. Uh, if you're on a Timor mini store or uh, doing cross-border store, in that case, you will have to put it in a warehouse, uh, consignment warehouse uh, provided by the platform. And in that case, although the inventory, st strictly speaking, is, is not inside mainland China, it's still a cross-border purchase but you will still have to put it in a bonded warehouse before the order. So it's a bit more constraining. But in the case of the WeChat store, you have complete freedom on how you do logistics and you can keep all your inventory uh, outside China. And another question from Alexandre is uh, some brands have a store on both Tmall and Tmall Global. What are your thoughts on being present on both channels? So usually you would have a Tmall Classic for your best sellers uh, because that's where you localize inventory. And if you have uh, a lot of SKUs, which might not have such big volume in China, so it's not actually worth it to import them into the local market, you will have this on Timor Global. So you, you might have your 50 best selling SKUs uh, on, on Classic, and then let's say you have 500 other SKUs, but the volume does not justify having a significant inventory localized, uh, because maybe you have a, a couple orders every month on each, uh, each SKU, then you might want to keep them in Timor Global, because then you can ship them only after you receive the order and you don't have to localize uh, the inventory. Okay, uh, I also saw there is a question about how to link uh, uh, from, 
from Red to WeChat. So uh, actually, Red just closed all the external links. So right now, uh, it's not possible to open, for example, a website or link to WeChat, link to TML directly, because the core uh, feature of Red is genuine sharing. So uh, Red really want to make sure that, uh, in a way, the, the product reviews there are original and genuine. So although there is no official way to do that, there's other uh, complementary things that we can do. So for example, when you operate a Red official account, you, uh, we usually create a post, a pinned post uh, about the sales channels. So for example, we'll say, uh, here are our, our official sales channels, find us here on TML and find which had a, a mini program. So people uh, will need to do that manually. Yeah, I don't know if Thomas, you want to add something here? No, all clear for me, I agree. I will answer a couple of questions, more, more, more questions. One is from Madeleine. Uh, it's kind of an extension of the question I already answered. Uh, do Doin with ChatJD also own bonded warehouses? So Doin is doing bonded warehouses with a partner uh, called YTO. They don't own it, but uh, they have an official partner for that. WeChat uh, doesn't own any uh, logistics or very little. Uh, because they are uh, marketing platforms, they're not really an operator. So in the case of WeChat, you do your own logistics. And JD owns the bonded warehouse. So in this case, yes, they, they do own the warehouse. And uh, Madeleine is saying in cross-border e-commerce, you need to store the products in a bonded warehouse to sell to customers. You don't really, you don't need to, it doesn't matter where you store the product, as long as it's outside China. You could actually send it directly from your own warehouse, and that would be okay. Uh, if you want to benefit from the 9.1% uh, rate, uh, you need to do something called uh, three orders matching. So you need to match, match the payment data, the logistics data, and the order data, and send that to customs to make sure that you can benefit from this rate. Uh, it's easier to do, indeed, in a bonded warehouse because they will have the, the setup for that, but you don't have any obligation to be in a bonded warehouse in order to ship cross-border or even in order to benefit from this cross-border tariff. And another question I can pick is from Carlos. Uh, is uh, as far as I know, WeChat, Weibo, Xiaomi accounts can be opened with a foreign business license. That is, that is correct. Uh, what happens if you want to open a Doin official account? Uh, and uh, there is a limited amount of official accounts uh, that can be opened with a Chinese business license. Uh, do I need to have a partner in China, or do you take care of this? So you can actually create a cross-border account with Doin. Uh, it's more restricted than other platforms. This is true. Uh, because we are tier one advertising partner of Doin, we can actually help companies do that. Uh, and you could have a cross-border store and a cross-border account created with your foreign business license. Uh, but it, it is um, less open than WeChat. On WeChat, you could do that yourself um, by just going on the WeChat uh, website uh, for the official accounts and just enter your business license information. It's relatively straightforward. In the case of Doin, uh, it's, uh, it requires special agency uh, relationships. Uh, you can use uh, the link I put in the chat if you want to reach out uh, and ask questions about that. Um, yeah, that, that's it for this question. OK, uh, then I also saw uh, there's a question from Madeline. Traffic in WeChat is generated mainly through private traffic and doesn't have such a big exposure like uh, such as uh, JD or TML. So what are the options to boost traffic here? So uh, it's true that naturally when people open WeChat, they are here to chat instead of to purchase. So you do have to make some marketing effort to uh, attract, uh, to boost the traffic. For example, the most direct way is to work with some uh, WeChat KOLs. So they can insert the WeChat mini program link in the post that they create and people can buy uh, through the link directly. So this is the most smooth uh, way. And another way is driving the traffic from external platforms such as uh, Red uh, in most of the cases. Uh, in terms of Douyin, uh, since Douyin already have an, in a closed ecosystem already, people will have chance also buy directly on Douyin. So either is you have your own uh, private traffic and uh, such as a WeChat group, and you keep the users there very active, 
or you boost it through uh, external traffic such as uh, red, uh, such as Bilibili and others. So I, for example, uh, I just to add that, um, for example, with uh, lemon box, lemon box is a complementary uh, vitamin product and uh, they are selling through WeChat with a WeChat mini program because they do their uh, customized uh, plan. So based on what you need, they, they design a customized plan for you. But their main marketing effort has been on Bilibili because working with the uh, Bilibili um, influencers, they can explain very fully the how does it work, uh, how to go to the WeChat mini program in, turn, uh, in, in a video content. So it's much clearer. It's, uh, it's another way to drive traffic externally to WeChat. Yeah. Um, I pick a, a question from Alberto Antinucci, uh, which is asking, should you choose uh, between WeChat mini program e-commerce solution and a red e-commerce solution? Which one would you recommend and why? So I would definitely pick uh, WeChat. Uh, red is just a, not such a great e-commerce solution. Uh, conversion rates on it are very low uh, and people don't tend not to buy from red. So if I had to choose uh, for e-commerce, I would pick a Tmall first. Uh, then I would pick either WeChat or Doin, depending on the pricing of my products and the positioning and the industry. Uh, if I had a more affordable F&B or fashion product, I would go for Doin. If I had something a bit more expensive, uh, premium or luxury, I would go for WeChat. And I would only pick uh, um, red last just because people don't buy so much from it and it makes it very hard to get good ROI from campaigns. Red is amazing for marketing, but people go there to look for information they don't buy from the platform. Yeah, just to, uh, just to add a side note, for example, uh, I don't remember which brand, but a brand that has uh, both red store and uh, uh, TML store, uh, for the same styles uh, that they are selling more than 1,000 uh, per month on Tmall, they are only selling like three to three or four pieces on red each month. So you, if you do it correctly, you could generate some sales, but it will be a very, very small fraction of the, uh, of the total ones. Okay, uh, I will also answer this advertisement related question from Celine. Uh, what is the industry performance level for CTR in different platform? So uh, this is a very uh, broad question because it depends on the uh, on each industry and it depends on the season as well. But uh, a broad answer here is that uh, like uh, the in the general CTR on red uh, is uh, is quite high because as we explained before, people are on red looking for information, looking for comments. So higher chance uh, they will click into uh, the content and look for more. So it could be also good because people there are looking for fun, looking for uh, entertainment. Well, uh, Weibo is the, uh, is the worst one uh, like, uh, like, like we showed there. So again, it, it uh, depends a lot on the industry and outside of the, of the ad, for example, uh, in in case in a case of red, that would be uh, the the first picture of your post. So you really want to make it uh, uh, make it eye catching, so people will click into it. And I, I will take what might be the last question for me. I don't know, Shane, if you have more 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 energy to answer more. <laughs> uh, but so for Timon Minister, would there be a budget needed for marketing advertising to be effective to list? Uh, yes. So in general, it will be necessary to have a budget uh, in order to promote, except if you have um, uh, very, very significant organic uh, traffic, uh, then that would be, that would you generate organic sales. But for most brands, you'll have to invest. So how much do you have to invest? In practice, uh, a total budget you have to commit if you're new to China would be at least $100,000 for the first year and uh, ideally $200,000. So, which also means if your brand, which is very, very new, you're less than $5 million of sales, uh, it might not be the best choice for you to enter the Chinese market if you're not a Chinese brand. Uh, and we have a lot of conversations like this with founders where I tell them that, okay, uh, 
maybe they should start doing marketing on Instagram. And if they're from UK, start to do the US. If they're from US, do UK or France or other countries before they start China. Uh, when we get to a brand which is around five to 20 million uh, euros or dollars of sales, uh, that's where we're starting to have real conversations about entering China, because usually it means that the brand already has a bit of visibility in China. If a brand goes to like 20 million euros of uh, revenues uh, globally, most likely some Chinese influencers already started noticing it. And it means it can afford to spend like maybe 200K and it's not such a significant risk. And if the, they don't completely break even the first year, they can still see the very good results and keep investing. So we are very, very uh, conservative and realistic when we do revenue projections these days. And we try to tell the brands exactly what they can expect. And in practice, it means that you need to consider 100K to 200K investment. If you invest more, you will break even faster. So we had some, some brands which were bigger brands, like for instance, PD Palo, a Spanish jewelry brand. They invested quite a bit during the first few months and they broke even after two or three months of operations. If the brands are a bit more conservative, uh, it also takes more time to break even because they're, they're taking a bit more time to see significant sales. Okay, uh, I see there are still a lot of questions here, but it's already uh, 4 p.m. Uh, how our webinar is scheduled. Uh, and there are more uh, specific questions about industry like uh, like property or uh, B2B. In this case, please uh, just uh, reach out to us on our website. You can submit a request and we'll get back to you case yeah, by case. We can use this contact form I'm sending in the chat too, as that's also one way to reach out. Um, yeah, and uh, sorry, we couldn't answer all the questions. There are still uh, 17 open questions plus like maybe 10 more, which was asked in the chat. Uh, so we, we wish we had more time, but we also want to be mindful of everyone's time who chose to attend. So thanks a lot for attending. Thanks again, Shalin, for this presentation, which I enjoyed and I think everyone enjoyed very much. And uh, yeah, thanks again, everyone for, for joining us. Thank you. Have a nice day. Uh, yeah, and last, one evening. last point is, is uh, we, we will be sending the deck and we'll also hopefully be sending the recording to the presentation via to all the attendees. Uh, so you will have a, a trace of everything we said. Okay, thanks, Thomas. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Have a thanks, good Jane. evening, afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.